Yeah, yeah, I know this isn't my usual content, but what are you gonna do? Cry about it? Maybe piss your pants? Anyway. City Skylines is probably the best city builder game ever released. Sorry, SimCity, but honestly, you're not currently in a position to dispute this. City Skylines, made by Colossal Order and published by Paradox, sort of simplified and streamlined various aspects of the genre, and since its release has sold immensely well. Even its DLCs have stacked up mountains upon mountains of purchases. It's a game I've enjoyed for ages, although compared to some of the posts I see on this game's subreddits, my cities are pretty clearly not that advanced, but despite all this, the game's been subject to a number of complaints in recent times, and these range from criticism for the game's systems and mechanics to a few serious charges levied against the real-world impact of this game. And I want to go over some of these, evaluate their merits, but ultimately I think there's one main point in favour of City Skylines that a lot of this criticism hasn't noticed. One of these repeated grievances with the game is the way it seems irrevocably based on the principles of car dependency. Cars are unequivocally the basic form of transport in this game. This is how most of your citizens will move from point A to point B, even if they arrive in the city by boat, or by train or bus. They spawn cars and get on the highway, clogging up your roads and creating noise pollution. There's a great deal of videos addressing this particular criticism, so I won't go into full detail on it here, but it's hard to escape noticing the ways city skylines covertly maneuvers its players into building urban systems reminiscent of North American cities in which the automobile is key, and residential, commercial, and professional environments are necessarily separated by miles and miles of congested tarmac. There's no mixed-use zoning, there's no zonable pedestrian streets, and highways are the one constant in any city skyline's map. Without a mind-boggling degree of modding, you can't get anywhere near a city skyline's experience which isn't oriented around that bastard mechanical son of Henry Ford. Another key problem with the game's depiction of urbanism and city planning is that it encourages would-be architects to look at nothing beyond the numbers. City project, traffic flow, land value, etc. There's no downside to demolishing neighbourhoods to put in a freeway or railroad, or raising taxes, or pollution levels so long as you have adequate healthcare facilities, which isn't hard. This type of complaint is communicated particularly well through Prez's video entitled How City Skylines Makes You Plan Bad Cities. I've linked it in the description, so I recommend you check that out if you're curious as to the downsides of this style of city builder. The takeaway here then is that despite Skyline's addictive gameplay loop, unique visual style, and spellbinding customizability, there's a fundamental flaw within the game, the ways it tacitly encourages tomorrow's city planners to embrace bad practices. And don't get me wrong, this is a valid concern, I agree completely, but there's something here which I think might have been overlooked. You see, a lot of these voices online identifying key problems with the game's urbanist ideologies and implicit automotive biases only know anything about this field at all because of this game. There are trained architects and city planners who chose their profession as a result of this game, and well, yeah, I guess some of them might try to implement ideas like the 100% traffic flow imperative into their real projects. A lot more of these voices, of people driven to learn about urbanism following experiences with city skylines are the same voices as the critical ones we've noted earlier. Think about it, videos like Prez's only exist and become successful through this game. Looking at the comments of channels like this, or Not Just Bikes, or City Beautiful, it's clear that the experience of City Skylines has directed many people towards critical thought on topics like car dependency and responsible urbanism. This principle is perhaps most evident in the fan communities of City Skylines itself, believe it or not. Because whenever questions about the content of City Skylines 2, or user-generated feature wishlists crop up, they invariably show deeper 
critical thinking on the first game's blind spots. People want mixed use zoning and zonable pedestrian streets and a way to build a city which de-emphasizes the car. People want ways to build a city that reflects any of the myriad ways cities were built and experienced by their inhabitants throughout history which don't revolve around the automobile. There's now thousands of people clamouring for a more accurate, less simplistic city building simulation as a direct result of city skylines, whatever its flaws. Crowds of people encouraged to think outside the restrictive and automotive status quo of modernist western urbanism. And honestly, so what if the thing that made them think this way has a few blind spots? At this point I think it's worth invoking one of the famous laws of the internet. Cunningham's law states, on the internet, the best way to get the right answer is not to ask a question, it's to post the wrong answer. Because then hundreds of pissed off reply guys will instantly dart into your inbox with a correction. Okay, that second sentence was me paraphrasing, but this is a principle to which I think we can all attest. And I'd like to suggest a similar thing is at work here, with city skylines and its culture of architectural hobbyists. You see, it's exactly because city skylines got some things wrong, offered limited and reductive options for transit and planning, that so many people got inspired to research better answers. The vast, vast majority of these videos, critiques and intelligent, thoughtful ideas on the correct and responsible way to create a city builder owe their existence to the flawed gem that is Skylines. Because the crucial way this game impacts and changes its players isn't as simple as them seeing systems which work better in-game, like massive freeways everywhere, and then trying to implement them in real-world cities. The crucial impact Cities Skylines has on its players is that it makes them perceive aspects of their environment in a new way. Once you've logged a few hours in Skylines, you start to notice things you'd previously taken for granted. You stop thinking of buses and trains as just those things which are always late. You start appreciating their presence and you begin to see the transport networks of a city as a three-dimensional web linking the population together. You start to notice the different types of intersection and roadways around you. And you see how each one affects traffic and how well or bad they're integrated into their environment, and maybe you look around at a junction and think, hey, this would work better as a roundabout. Maybe you realise that a particular neighbourhood could really do with a particular transit link. Look, maybe you had an awareness of these things already. That's great, good job. But I can say with certainty that as a result of Skylines, there are now a great many more people, the architects, voters, councillors of tomorrow, who have been given the interpretative tools to view the traditions of 21st century urbanist orthodoxy with a critical eye. And as we enter an epoch of human history where rapid changes towards more affordable, efficient and sustainable developments in this field become increasingly essential, that can only be a good thing. So thanks City Skylines from all of us. I don't do many videos on games on this channel, mainly because I think the YouTube algorithm thinks this channel is just like a TV, film, cartoon channel, so it doesn't recommend them, and then it wrecks the performance of my next videos because it thinks, oh, he's changing it to a game channel, blah blah blah. I don't do them much, but I do them every now and then, so if you like this, check the channel out, there's a couple more on there. Otherwise, let me know what you thought about the points I raised, and thanks for watching. And again, I want to say a really big thank you to my patrons on screen now, and especially Ian Fifield. 